Welcome to Sunday Night Smackdown! Movie Just review and tractor pull! Yeah. Just me. Or is it getting crazier out there? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Late Late Horror Show. Uh, Sunday Night Smackdown with me and Ginger. Uh, <laughs> it's sticking. It's going to stick. It's so funny. You, I, we go to the intro there, and uh, Ginger's like fixing her hair. Well, she's such a girly girl, is right. Yeah, I tell you. The, the, the name fits, and, and you know it. So you, that's your handle. <laughs> But anyways, we're going to be talking about Dress to Kill. Oh, my God, 1981, Brian De Palma. We're going to talk about this real quick in a minute here. Uh, hello. You can say hello to Rich Cat Ranch, Chris oh, W. Can I? Can I, Dino? Um, hold on a second. Uh, hello, Rich Cat Ranch, WWM, Chris W. <laughs> There's the fingers. Um, Connie Clary. Hey, Binks. Binks is here. Uh jar jar's younger brother maybe i don't know um but good to see you uh hopefully you're a regular here now yeah are you are you sticking to us like glue uh sinjin sinjin good to see you peter what's going on um harry scott horror junkie for life um what's going on uh <laughs> cm uh don't want to miss anybody uh yeah i think that's good yeah let's move on let's start talking hey, tow car mark m what's going on um peter, so yeah what peter says i'm ready for some ginger level sass <laughs> yeah yeah let's well let's see if she's got some to give this week because I, i'm pretty sure we're on the same boat but we'll still get some sass so some smackdown we'll, we'll get all that good stuff because i'm gonna i'm gonna not like something she says i i just know it i know it but uh well maybe not maybe not likewise i'm sure uh, exactly i can't wait till i say something you don't like so you can i can take you off camera but any no you listen won't wait long you won't wait long listen, listen you know what surprises me with this movie and, and again we're talking uh brian de palma's dress to kill 1981 it's basically an erotic thriller yes that's the genre that usa has put it into but i, I i'm it, which it is it's an erotic thriller i you know it is for sure but i i'm curious why nobody's really kind of put it in the category of giallo because it's 100 percent. oh it's a absolutely giallo a giallo absolutely it's not an in italian giallo film which that's kind of maybe why they go and eh, the italians call their uh, the horrors like that no brian de palma went out of his way to make this film an American giallo film. I mean, look at how the killer's dressed, the, the transgender thing, everything about giallo is in this film. The, uh, but, the investigation, the police investigation that's going on. Yep, yep. You don't know who the killer is. I mean, that's giallo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, red herrings uh, everywhere, uh, you know, just... It's it's Brian De Palma's take on it, uh, but I it's it's funny that people. I think once you're like encompassed in the whole Giallo like world, then you know, of course, that this is Giallo all the way. You know, it absolutely is. But there is an aspect of this that is erotic thriller too, and you get bookend pretty much with uh, the beginning of the movie, a, a shower scene. The end of the movie, a shower scene. And uh, yeah, it's very. The beginning of the movie is a dream sequence, and the end of the movie is a dream sequence. There you go. Yes, yes. Bookends. It's, 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 you know what? Brian De Palma is one of the greats. Uh, you know, he, he's done stuff like Scarface, Untouchables, a lot of gangster films. Um, but man, I, I think this movie it, is done way way better in artistic and wait until we do those. blowout well yeah and that's another great film he he's very good at these uh thrillers mm -hmm. and in movies like that hello poetic yes. justice how are you doing 
Hi, to see everybody. <laughs> Hi. Wow. Brian, the cinematography, the cinematography in this movie is so, the things he does with a camera and the oh, views yeah. and the lenses and the lighting, it, the, it's just, it's art. It's art. It's art, just like any of the greats like Da Vinci and, and, and Picasso yes, and all that. It's art. When it comes to the screen, uh, there are certain things that De Palma does, you know, yes. such as, uh, uh, you know, the split screen's always done. Now, a lot of people did that in the 80s anyways, but he's got this forward and back focus thing. Oh, I love that. I that love just, it. I that just... Just distinguishes the scenes where, you know, you, you, at one point you're seeing the killer way in a different, you know, in the background mm -hmm. with, you know, like Nancy Allen up front, but it's called like a, um, you know, a forward back focus type thing. Uh -huh. Just, I mean, you look at that and you go, Brian De Palma, you know, that's his yeah. film. Uh, I do believe Blowout uh, has some kind of scenes like that too, with that uh, back and forward. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so uh, it, yeah, it very much distinguishes him from a lot of the other uh, directors of the time. And uh, I, I don't 80s. think that this. I'm sorry, I don't think that this movie is perfect, but it's close to perfect. It's so close to just perfection. There's a just a couple little mm -hmm. things that. Just a teeny tiny little things that just I can't stop thinking about when I'm watching the movie, but it's okay. so close to perfect. And, and and we'll have to touch on that then because I definitely like to know what you what those are because um, I look at the film and especially the ending, I started going okay, a perfect film up until the last. Ten, five, 10 minutes that's my film. big that's my big issue with this movie is like that was so unnecessary and yeah yeah there, there I mean, were I things just, there had to have been another way he could have ended it he, i mean oh just not even just that how he uh, the killer escapes from the institute or whatever he's at uh, we'll yeah talk. like come on and, and we'll talk the, about he's yeah. the same size as that nurse that he killed they wear the same size shoe saying he yeah. can fit in her her clothing really again there are problems but man but it was a dream so you can excuse it by saying well she was dreaming it was a dream it made um, sense to her because it was a dream right right okay so let's start yeah. let's start with the opening yeah. scene dino please take it away <laughs> you want me to start off with this so yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> the, the movie de definitely starts off um anybody in here let's see Jerry emily. emily what's going on good to see you guys uh did see you in morning coffee this morning emily um uh didn't have time to pop in because i woke up and i went oh my god i'm going back to bed uh, but i've seen you guys there so hopefully you guys had a good you know, discussion this morning. Johnny Dollar tonight uh, got a <clears throat> mixed bag of surprise episodes. So uh, just enjoy the stream tonight. Uh, plenty of spooky stuff coming up down the road. But yes, we start this film off with the one and only Angie Dickinson. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's this shower scene and her husband's uh, kind of uh, shaving with the straight razor blade. Because everybody know. has a straight razor. Everybody in that movie just has a straight. Who has a straight razor? Well, you know he, what? In the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, it, come on. Lots, listen, there were lots of straight razors still. I never there. saw one. I was I alive did. then. I never saw one in real life. I saw them at barber shops. Okay. Well, hey, it's, it's for the movie then. Well, whatever. They they, they went to a, a Hollywood discount prop store. And, and they, <laughs> I got a deal. Reason. Yeah, so there were tons of them there. Yeah, uh, but but yes, you get Angie Dickinson. She's she's this. Um, she's basically an an adulterous uh, she, she, woman, older woman. She's unsatisfied who, at who, home with her husband. Yes, yes, and she she does say and he doesn't care. Andy he's Dickinson, terrible in bed. Yeah, she's forty five years old in that movie. And she's got a fantastic body. And I know that's not yeah. her in the shower. Exactly. But she still looks fantastic for a woman her age. And her husband's not the slightest bit interested. She's in the shower naked, taking a shower. And he's just yeah. shaving like, oh, I got to think about getting that Wall Street Journal canceled. And it's like, your wife is super hot. And she's naked next to you taking a shower. And you're just like, la, 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 la. He, well, never, he never once looked at her. 
again a dream sequence he was so, dreaming true she but, was dreaming but um and that's what brian de palma did the dream sequences at the beginning and at the end but you, you get her in the shower she's she you basically get full frontal it is not angie oh, dickinson's body frontal. oh yeah she's going down with the hand to the bush and doing a little <laughs> bit of uh, i knew you were gonna say it i knew you were gonna say well, it i knew well, it that's exactly what was down there and, and, <laughs> and it was i mean at first, this got an X rating, and he fought to get in an R rating. So, I mean, you know, it's 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 that sexual, that erotic. Um, you know, the shower scene just was her self pleasing herself, and and her fantasy of him shaving, and he wished he was in there with her, and she's just looking voyeuristically at him while he's shaving, and then all of a sudden, as they pan up and down on the body, which that body double, that was yeah anyways um th this guy leaps out and grabs her and just starts choking her and so and part of the fantasy she's looking for something different because the sexual aspect of their marriage relationship is not working and he's not putting any effort into making it spicing it up at all right and and she's on the lookout and doing everything she can to uh to spice things up so the dream sequence and then it pops right in to them making love on the bed and, and that was the saddest thing that has ever happened <laughs> <laughs> in a I'm, sex scene it was yeah, so sad it was, it was it was pretty sad i mean the, the poor, <laughs> poor angie dickinson was just laying She's there like, on her it's the back, 890th right. time maybe this time i'll enjoy it <laughs> Listen, you know, no, I, I no, I'm not even going to get into it. I, I got to be careful. S hash John, hey hash, what's going on? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, so then she goes in and talks to her son. Yeah, she does. And he, her son um, is like a little computer whiz. You well, know, Angie Dickinson's it. name is Kate Miller. Okay. Yes. Um, and her son is Keith Gordon. I, I mean, he Keith Gordon plays her son Pete Miller. And he uh, played in Christine. He he in played Christine. in also uh, amongst other things. But um, and and Angie Dickinson played in Police Woman, of course. Uh, you guys all know that. Anyways, <laughs> go on. Police Woman. She was super hot. I mean, she was like one of you. She was like a, I guess maybe like the last of like old Hollywood. Like, cause she did some stuff. She was in movies. Like, she did a western in like the, I think it was like the late fifties. Mm -hmm. Super hot. With oh, I think yeah. Rock Hudson or I, somebody will know. She I did a so. Angie Dickinson did a western, and she wore the corset and the stockings with the garter belt. She was super hot. Yeah. And, but this was a, this was a black and white movie. This was many many years ago. But oh, she yeah. was still aging just beautifully. She aged very well. Listen, there's a, there's there's a several women um well there's a lot more than that but hey kathy what's going on hugs to yeah, you clean it up dino uh, clean it up clean i'm it trying up. to watch i'm trying to watch what i say yeah. <laughs> listen uh you know you got angie dickinson uh barbie benton uh you got raquel welch there there's many women who just you look at them and you go she's what she's 60 years old yeah and, and you know they just still look beautiful you know what i mean so uh genetics does play a part in all of that but uh <laughs> But she oh, was aging you. very well. She was. She was, she, was. she was aging well enough that people had to be told that that wasn't her naked in the shower. She looked that good. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Well, but she the, was the, still. She was like the last of like old Hollywood, you know. Well, and they pushed the fact that you know they tried to say you know hey hey let's play this off as that is you in the shower. So uh, at least that's what's been said. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know. You know, Hollywood wanted people to think. So she Brian, goes in and she's talking to her son. Yeah. Yes. And he's building some kind of doodad thingy for oh. science fair or something. Yeah, I don't know what this thing was, but he's like, it can handle 50,000 digits or something like that. It, it's so funny. Look at your cell phone right now, people. And then look at what he's doing in this Right, it's movie. like his whole room. It was his, his whole bedroom. Fair. Yeah, his whole bedroom. It was just hooked up with things <laughs> and blinking lights and stuff. And I'm like going... Okay, 50 digits. Okay, so what can that do? What is it? You know? But right. he, he said it's it's the Peter, you know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. 
And his mom says something about playing with his Peter when she leaves the room. She's like, I'll leave you to play with your Peter. Yeah, that was disgusting. Uh, oh, yeah, it was bad. That was so bad. In poor Kate taste. Keller. Come on. Come on. I apologize. Kate. Forgive yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You guys like the light? I got the Beetlejuice going there above me. Uh, because anybody, uh, somebody, somebody repeatedly requests to turn the Beetlejuice. Why have the Beetlejuice sign if you're not going to turn it on? It makes no I sense. Know. I know. Horror Junkie for Life says 50,000 digits is slow now. I know that's when I was looking at it. And, but this was before I, people had like computers in their homes. You yeah. know, nobody in 1980 had a computer in their house. Nobody I knew. No, the, 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 the size of this thing was just ridiculous, but um, yeah, that's what so, she said. <laughs> so, okay. So let's jump to right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so that all of that happened and she ends up going to this, uh, museum and this is kind of the big she big went to her, didn't she go to her therapist first okay we could talk about that yeah yeah we don't have to but i'm just saying okay oh, she no, went no. to the therapist it's important that we do because th there's a main character michael kane is the psychiatrist elliot uh, dr elliot yes dr elliot and this is this sets up her doom because she goes to him and she says to him don't you find me attractive? And he says, yes. And she said, would you sleep with me? And he says, is that what I would, but I'm married. <laughs> and this is her downfall. She doesn't realize she has just sealed her own fate because what makes him, can we say it? What? That Michael Caine's the killer? Uh, oh God. Well, yeah, sure. Now we can say What it. makes him kill is when he actually gets turned on. Yeah, and, and yeah. she doesn't realize it, but now she has set that in motion because she told him, "Well, if you think I'm attractive, how come you don't try to sleep with me?" And he's like, he always looks at himself in the mirror when he feels aroused. He looks at himself in the mirror. It's so creepy. It's really well, he's, creepy. He's got this um, split personality because because basically he he's he's a woman trapped in a man's body. It's uh, and he looks in the mirror so he can remember which one yeah. he is. Which one am I right now? He looks in the mirror. Okay. Well, because when he gets aroused, it's it, it was um, what's his name? Oh God, um, it, it was Elliot and the alter ego, the other personality, Bobby. That, Bobby. Bobby. Yes, so it was Bobby and Elliot that were constantly, you know, fighting each other uh, over this whole dual uh, female male, uh, you know, feelings for a woman and, mm -hmm. and everything that he was going through. Um, you know, with this split personality disorder. And like Ginger said, uh, he is the killer. So you guys know that now. Um, I guess we can talk about other things throughout the movie then now that since we just said he's the killer. Spoiler Who alert! Know? Who didn't know? Uh, RTN says, uh, The Late Late Horror Show, what movie is being discussed? I've been watching, but I keep getting distracted by the flag. <laughs> She's been flashing a lot of sign. Oh, Thank you, RPN. I know. I'm, I, I'm, I'll turn it off next time. I know. See, I told you, Ginger. People just can't concentrate with that light. You wait till I see you, RTN. I'm going <laughs> to give you a pink belly that you'll never forget. Uh, Peter says, I'm in the minority for sure, but we had computers at our house in 1980. Wow, dad was a computer quality control engineer. <laughs> well, his dad was a quality control engineer for a computer. So and that's pretty cool to have that stuff. Um, you know, the first on your block with the VHS player and all that. But yes, he's he's in the um, doctor's office and this is the first glimpse. And you know what? Right away, I don't know if you felt the way, same way, Ginger, but right away I got the feeling that, hey, uh, Michael Caine is the killer. Mm -mm, not yet. You did? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, there is that thing going on and, and she's pushing the boundaries with everyone, even her psychiatrist. She says, do you want uh, me? You know, and he goes, yes. She goes, well, why don't you? He goes, well, because. He says I'm ethics. He mentions yeah. ethics. Yes. Yes. He, he mentions ethics and he's married and, and mm -hmm. I would not want to ruin everything that I've had. Mm -hmm. So he, he's honest with her, but yet, you know honorable uh, he's honorable but he's yeah yeah um so, 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 then so she, that's that scene and, uh, go so ahead she goes to the museum and listen this is th this kind of showcases brian de palma at his greatest 
because it's, oh. it's 10 minutes of no dialogue. No dialogue. And you it's, don't need it. You don't no. need it. It's totally score music driven. Um, the and score visual. It's all visual. All visual. The score kind of it pushes is, you to the anticipation oh. of the next scene, what's going on. And um, yeah, you want to describe what's going on uh, without just She's, saying she goes to the museum. Now, here's the thing. She yeah. mentioned to her son that they were supposed to go to the museum, but her son was like, I got to finish this. It's got to be done. She was going to take her son with her to the museum. Yes. So people say. Hello, Brandon that, Fernandez. Thank you. Yes, it is, Brandon. Um, yeah. People say that she went to the museum to look for a hookup, but she told her son they were supposed to go to the museum together. So she was going to go with her son. So she didn't necessarily go. Yeah. I think going to the museum, she went to clear her head. She went to think, to people watch. And the museum that they were supposed to be at was the Met Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. They were actually in Philly at the Philadelphia Art Museum. And I've been in that room that they were in. I was like, I guess all museums look the same because I've been in that room. Have you guys all tried your uh, chocolate malted Ovaltine yet? <laughs> it comes with many uh, vitamins and minerals. Uh Nutrients and ironins. And, and ironins? <laughs> but yes. That's a um, lot of money. Nutrients and ironins. Ironins. <laughs> but listen, um, and, and, oh, and there's there's a sweet and sour sauce from McDonald's here. So uh, how do you like that? Anyways. No ranch? Uh, no ranch? Yeah. Oh, no. Sweet and sour all the way. Uh, favorite dip? Sweet and sour. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so so this scene in this museum is just fantastic. And it, like I said, it represents everything that Brian De Palma is Although, good. Although, yeah. there's a better scene in this movie. This scene is very good. It's yeah. very good. But the climax of this movie is Ooh, better. What? It's better. Yeah? The, the, what do you The climax of the movie? Yes. Okay. At the end. At the, that's usually when it happens. So wow! What, so wow! It, it makes a peak, and then you kind of end the film. Uh, uh. So, 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 okay. The museum. She's she's sitting uh -huh. looking at all the the pieces of art and work, uh -huh. and she's sitting there, and she's mm, and she's writing down little notes as they're veering off. She sees and she's people thing. watching. She's people watching. People. It's so interesting. She's seeing. What's going on over there? Yes, we will get to the elevator scene eventually. That's that's the biggest scene in the movie that everybody talks about. Um, that's not the best scene in the movie. The best well, scene in the movie is the ending. Well, yeah, when she's in the office and those garters, that's the best scene of all time. And the but, way hey, that he's behind her. You know how you were talking yeah. before about uh, the close. What did you call it? The forward. Oh, it's called the forward and back focus. It's where you get two, you know, in, in the same scene there and one's blurry, one's up close and you kind of got to focus. Anyways, yeah. At that ending with the blue light, the black light and... and Giallo. That, American Giallo. Oh, that ending is... To me, this museum scene is fabulous. It's G-I-A-L-L-O. Giallo. G-A-G-I-A-L-L-O. Jallo. Um, yeah, so <laughs> she's like, what the hell am I doing a movie discussion with this guy for? And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Topo Gigio. <laughs> exactly. Amen to that, sister. Um, drink up your rum and coke. Yeah, she's a she needs her booze. Um, so <laughs> well, you said, you said the morning you said you wake right up and you you swig a shot of rum. <laughs> and um, no, she didn't say that. I'm just joking. Uh, so, okay. So, no, the I, museum. So, so, she didn't say that. It's caffeine. Oh. It's caffeine in the morning. Well, okay. And yeah, I'm addicted coffee. to that too. Of course you are. Morning <laughs> coffee. But well, what time you get up? Why aren't you in morning coffee? Come on. You disappoint the channel. What's going on with you? We got a whole segment here in the morning. Morning coffee. That's. Oh, I am not <laughs> conscious at that time of the morning. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do you know Brandon Fernandez? Mm, Ginger? No. 
Okay, okay. I'm just curious because you said it's Brandon Fernandez. Uh, he's saying a lot. Of, imagine your hand sliced by a razor. This you, you're jumping the gun and just like yeah, okay, you're, okay. You're doing so your own. Re- hold on, thing. hold on, hold on. Brandon's doing his own movie discussion and review in the chat. So, uh, you know, that's awesome. But let us get through. I the don't movie. know Brandon. I don't <laughs> know him. He doesn't understand maybe the assignment. Uh, who? Whoever this Brandon is. I'm just saying. Chris W. says, LOL, Dino lived for the garter moment. Uh, well, Nancy Allen. And, uh, listen, you know. When, Nancy there, Allen at her Nancy Allenist. <laughs> there, there's, there's beauty. And, you know, I, I, I'll say it over and over. The, the female body, for the most part, is a, a work of art. It's a, it's beautiful. It's a, for the most part. <laughs> well, you, you know what I mean. It's it's uh, anyways. Let, let's anyway, go. so the museum. She's sitting there. She's taking notes, which is the funniest thing. Go get get turkey after this. So you know you're seeing. You see She's making a shopping list. She yeah, was going to go to the museum good. anyway. She was going to go yeah. with her son. So she's writing notes and taking making a list for, for the grocery and she, store. And, and, and the funny thing is, is she texts it twice. And, you know, that's that's the really – you only do that in December. I mean, I'm sorry. Okay, but, so – But this weird old thing, creep. The thing that I find this really weird old creep about this <laughs> – Do you people see what I put up, up with? Do you see up, what I have to put up with right here? Are you watching this? Who are you looking this? at? Who are you looking what I have at? to put up with? Who are you looking at? You look. You're looking off to the right of the screen. What's going on? Somebody in there? Somebody watching you? You got an audience? Gingers, I, you I'm got, trying you to actually, hold on to my audience. You actually yeah. got all your friends in front of you watching. I'm trying to hold on to the audience. Look, <laughs> <laughs> they go, they go. But hey, okay, so there's this perverted guy. He looks perverted. I don't know. He's, 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 he's looks like some creep. I don't know. It comes up. Good he's got looking his... Hollywood type guy. Nice hair, so. leather yeah. jacket. Looks very sophisticated. Black sunglasses. Dark you know. aviator shades on. He's very yeah. sexy. Very very seventies sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the he even had the brown like leather jacket kind of thing that you wore in the seventies. So eighties. Uh, so late seventies, early eighties. Late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, yeah. And, the big, um, the big the wide big leg wide polyester pants. Polyester pants. <laughs> but he sits but down he, next to her. And he he could just, sit anywhere he, he wanted. Anywhere he wanted. And he, he came and, and he, sat he right next came to her. Sat right next to her. And immediately she and was immediately, like, immediately, he's, yep, she's like, whoop, hi, <laughs> hey, what you got down there, young? And she fella? makes eye contact yeah. with him. Yeah, she he makes eye contact her, with him, and they make yeah. eye contact, and she kind of gives him this little smile. And oh, he Ginger. Looks away. Ginger, he, he remember when he makes eye contact with her, and um, <laughs> she smiles at him, but he like totally ignores her, like, hey, you too old. And it pissed yeah. her off. It made her angry. Oh. oh, it did. And you know what she did? She looked him in the eye, and she, she took, took her off, glove off. She took her glove off and, and showed that off. rock. She was like, "That's okay. That's okay." I'm married. That was a pretty. That was a pretty big rock too. <laughs> her her diamond ring was a pretty hunk of diamond ring. I mean, you know, this guy that is very bad in bed at least bought the right ring at the right jewelry store. He certainly uh, did. Okay, now I'm hearing me echoing, but turn me down a little bit. Uh, anyways. Multi-decade guys. <laughs> Yay, 80s parachute pants. This says Chris W. Love it. I had a pair of parachute pants. Oh, I bet you had more than one pair. <laughs> no, I just had one. It, it quickly. <laughs> that was a fad that came and went with one buy. And, and <laughs> I still wish I had them. I could maybe make some money off. Do they still sell them? Anyways. Okay. So the guy, he she, she takes off her glove. She's got the ring there. What, what happens? Ginger. Uh, he gets up and walks away. Pew, pew, pew. He just can't help himself. I, I mean, I'll wait. I'll wait. Uh, no, no use for name is here. Hey, no use for name. Good to see ya. Uh, it's always good to see people back in the chat. Um, so yeah. They're sitting there together. She shows a ring. He he kind of immediately looks 
and goes and gets up and walks away. And she's just like, I'm doing everything wrong. I'm trying to get the right guy. I'm trying to, I'm trying to score here with, she's an adulteress. She, she, she's hooked up with, um, we have, yeah, I don't know how you feel about it, but I just want to ask you something. Sure. We have someone in the chat who's like, having their own commentary like kill joy spoil sport <laughs> every time we're getting ready to go into a scene he tells you what's going to happen like this is our review this is uh, me and Dino. are you talking about brandon yes. yeah Br brandon um yeah if yeah Come on, try, guy. try to just let us uh, i guess kind of discuss it without you discussing it i mean i i could talk to you in an email and we could discuss having you on the show as and we can do another show, like movie discussion with Dino and Brandon Fernandez. Uh, so email me. Do that. Do that. But but yeah, let's let's try not to like do a play by play a step ahead of us, you know, because it kind of ruins the whole discussion that we're having for people listening and and stuff like that. So uh, I guess if I continue to see it, and, and I have seen you here before, Brandon uh you know just please just let us talk so i'd appreciate it anyways uh legend he said just say legend when you see when you say score you mean score the music the music the yeah. score yeah either that or they score uh, outside the nine everyone in the chat is awesome thank you very much uh boy wonder uh so yes let's uh so he gets up, he walks away, and she's feeling hurt. She's feeling hurt because she thought she was going to get her some. Right, right, Ginger? Yeah. Say that again? Oh, you get you turned it down that low? Yes, oh. because you told me to. Well, I was, I'm not hearing it now, but I was hearing a very... Fine, so proceed, talk. Echo. What were you saying? Just that he got up and he left. He got up and he left. Yeah, since she got mad and she actually got up, dropped her glove, which and is you, very this important. Is the thing. We need, to, wrap, we need to speed this up because there's so much more of this movie to talk about. When yeah, they yeah leave, let's please. Come on. When they you, leave you're taking the way too long with these descriptions, Ginger. When they yeah, leave I, the museum, when she walks out of the museum, do yeah. you notice that she walks past a tall blonde wearing a black leather coat with black dark sunglasses on do you notice that when she oh. leaves the museum she walks right by him ginger Her. oh you are so observant you know see that's why you're here i mean i don't know what i'd do without you i mean uh, you know what why don't we try to find out Go ahead. Let's try to find out. So, yes, there's... Ha, did you notice that? Yes, I noticed it. Um, yes. yes. But it didn't register to me until I got to the end of the movie and watched it again. Somebody gave you a like, register? Oh, he walked right past her because it's just for a split second, you know? Don't oh, be yeah, so no, sarcastic. No. There's, listen, uh, there's many times in this movie where yeah you see her for a split second and i tell you they did a great job with not being able to you know michael Caine's a very i mean he's got features to his face that you're like oh man you know you, well you know i'd know him anywhere but when you put that blonde wig over him a little bit of makeup or whatever yeah you couldn't tell it was him you just couldn't tell right am i wrong can you hear me <laughs> I'm waiting until you're done. I was just making sure you're done. Are you done? Yes. But, okay, uh, okay so, so she's out there. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Michael Caine only actually wears, is is shown wearing that wig and stuff one time. Michael Caine? All Kane? the other times, it's not him. Who is it? Bobby? No, it's the policewoman. Okay, well, maybe I was confused by a few scenes then. It, it was it. It was the police woman the entire time. Yes. Other not than the, that, not no. The very first scene, yes. That's when you get the glimpse. Yes. And then the elevator scene. That's when you get Michael Caine dressed up. Let me just tell you. You know, I'm. I have a thing about nail polish. I have a thing about nail polish. You. I don't know if you noticed, but. In this yeah. movie, Nancy Allen yeah. has three manicures. 
in the beginning of the movie, when you first see her, this scene that's coming up, the elevator scene, her yeah. nails are dark, dark red, like a um, ox blood color. Because she's a businesswoman. She's a businesswoman. You got woman. that, guys? Ox blood color nail polish. Okay, continue. If you think the, the one thing I noticed in this movie was Nancy Allen's nail polish, you're, you're a little nuts. That, that is the last thing on my list that I noticed. Of her. But anyways, um, if, if it means can something. Can you have a look at the about. chat? Because it looks like um, Brandon has a problem with me. And that's fine. <laughs> but Okay, let me see. Uh, let, let's take care of this. Let's see. I must have missed when you first spoiled the killer. Uh, Ginger just spoiled it. Um uh yeah, yeah and the comment section is for comments you mean listen brandon i will tell you for the last time that this is it's a shame that i gotta explain to people certain <laughs> sometimes uh how things go see we're, we're discussing a movie and don't be offended by it if you don't mean it i'm just trying to explain to you when when people are sitting around and like on the channel and we're discussing a movie if you're discussing the movie and you're discussing moments before we even get to them, what's the point? We might as well just sit here and, and read all your comments and do a commentary around that. So that's all I'm saying. Um, be nice. Chat amongst everybody in the, the chat. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Yeah, Dino's strict channel. <laughs> yeah, it's so strict. You know, like, so don't strict. be a douchebag. It's so that, well, strict. That's, that's kind of just it. So just be cool, man. Just be cool, man. <laughs> and, and everything. Hey, man. Good. Cool <laughs> out, man. <laughs> but, but okay, so so we'll continue. Um, if, if it continues, uh, I'll be on it. So there you go. Uh, so the Axe Blood nail polish. Let's get to this. Yes. The beginning of the movie, scene. Nancy Allen is wearing yeah. a dark, dark red, like a businesswoman color because she's a businesswoman. She's making money. She's buying stocks and stuff. She's selling her body, but she's like, she lives in a really nice apartment in a great building. She's oh, yeah. investing her money. She's a smart Amen. businesswoman. You and she's on. wearing this dark, dark red, deep red polish yes. like a businesswoman would wear. Then in the middle it. of the movie when she's being the seductress. Yes. She wears blood red, thing. bright, bright, cherry red, like blood nail polish. And well, at the she, end of the movie, when she's like demure and she's been kind of like broken down a little bit by what she's seen, clear <laughs> nail polish, no nail polish at all. That's all. Well, that's an interesting breakdown. Um, and thank you, everybody. You know, we got a family here and, and you guys are all cool. Brandon, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, so I love ginger's breakdown of the nail polish and nancy <laughs> allen's character i mean it, I, that's film. something that i noticed i noticed nail polish i don't think you're going to hear that on any other any other channel or movie discussion um yeah see i just keep looking over at the chat now um so oh see and, and that's the other thing it kind of takes away from us talking about the movie because i gotta constantly look over uh i do got mods in there if you see somebody getting out of hand or something like that after multiple see, times this is the thing that people need to understand dino's channel the nonsense that you see on other people's channels you don't get that here and that's why we love each other that's why i have a great family here because of Amen. dino because he Amen. built a channel where we respect each other this is a happy place you come in here with nonsense that you're normally seeing in other channels, you're yes. going to get shut down because Dino, our family, we're not like that. Listen, we if you get each other, yes. we're nice to each other. So if you if you get that uncle that comes in and he's been drinking just a little bit too much. The same starts, uncle. It's always the same one. <laughs> yes, yes. And starts, you know, yeah, you, you know, man, you're <laughs> you're my uncle, dudes. Chill out, chill out. You I, love you, I love you, man. I love you. You don't tell me to chill out, man. No, you don't. And and me and my you know brothers kick him out of the house. It's like yes. No, it's, it's like not family. a party until Uncle Joe gets <laughs> dragged away by the police. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Let's let's get through this. So the elevator scene. We're, we're you know 
uh, Angie Dickinson's character, Kate Miller, uh, and we can rush through parts. So we'll get to the end. I mean, we're 41 minutes in and we were at the elevator. We didn't plane. talk about the cab, the cab ride over. Okay. They have sex okay, in the up. cab. Hurry up and hit the cab drive. And then I will talk about the elevator. Go ahead. She leaves the museum. She's lost this guy. She's lost her glove. She goes out of the museum and she has the other glove. And she's like, well, what do I need this for? I don't have the other ones. And she throws it on the ground. And then she sees her glove hanging right. out of a cab attached to the guy that she was playing cat and mouse with in the museum. And she walks over and he just grabs her and pulls her into the cab. And they just do yeah, the thing I in the cab. And the cab driver's like, <laughs> He's looking, yeah. watching them. It's like, really? <laughs> yeah, listen. Yeah, when he's flashing that glove and 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 she jumps in the cab with him. First of all, I'm just like going. Well, I mean, this was '81, so yeah. Although something happened. Why did she apartment. pay for that though? She oh. pays for that mistake. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, the scene in the cab. Ginger wasn't real descriptive, but you know, they started to immediately. He started kissing her and going at it, and the the taxi driver's like fixing a mirror going like this and they literally he, he she's and she's making these noises then i'm like on you know lady just go for it uh and um you know he's he's taking her you know panties off and, and it drops on the floor there in the cab and she so. forgets them she leaves her panties in the cab as because, you do it happens yeah. because she's, <laughs> taxi cab <laughs> confessions remember that hbo uh, I forget when that was late eighties, early nineties, but anyways, um, they, they, they quickly rush up to the apartment. Okay. Uh, where he lives. She, she's right along. Uh, don't think this guy's really said anything to her, but yet he's, they don't even know each other's names. They don't even right. know each other's names. It, those are what we call one night stands, but he was able to pull her up to the apartment and, you know, then they show it's nighttime and she's in bed and she's looking over and going, Oh my God, the time. Oh my God. What's going to do? So, she, so she rushes around the she apartment up and gets dressed and puts her yes. jewelry and stuff on and puts her clothes on. And she goes over to his writing desk. Cause yeah. back then you had a writing desk. She oh. finds a little piece of stationery and she writes a little goodbye note to him. Yes. Then she finds something in his drawer. She does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're rushing really quick. Uh, yeah, during all of this movement, she's back and forth, back and forth, getting rings, getting, she's forgot this, forgot that. She didn't get a uh, ring. She didn't get a ring. She didn't get she a got ring. Bracelets. Right? Yes, yes, bracelet. And then she gets to that desk and she opens the drawer up. And yes, what Ginger just said, she, she sees this, like she sees his name. It's then there's something that says health club. And then she sees health this department, hospital, health department thing where it says you have contracted a venereal disease. <laughs> And Syphilis she and gonorrhea. Up. Yeah, and she I'm looks super. up. And, uh, she looks up and goes. And again, Brian De Palma's making a point. You know, hey, this is all going on and on with this movie, but you better not just run off with any old guy. <laughs> have sex like this. Now otherwise, you gotta pay. Otherwise, yeah, you're gonna die. You're gonna get a venereal disease. You're gonna get slashed up by some. Anyways, she just and she hustles out of there. When she sees that, she's like, I gotta get out of here. Listen, the whole beginning of this film is basically the story is don't be an adulteress or you're going to get killed. That's, you know, Brian De Palma wrote this in there somehow. I don't know. Making a point, you know, poor Angie Dickinson. She just wanted some love, but it ended up turning into this weird, you know, sexual kind of like thing you know what i mean and it ended up getting her killed but anyway she, she, and she, said that that she was promiscuous but do we know that she did this before that might have been her first time ever doing that i mean do yeah, they, yeah they don't she say she did it one time yeah they, they don't say because even in the psychiatrist the psychiatrist office uh with uh dr elliot mm -hmm. he states why don't you tell him he's bad in bed? Why don't you let him know these things? Why don't you mm -hmm. tell him? And, you know, also playing the other side and saying, hey, you know, if you're having these issues, you don't just let them go by. Then day in, day out, you're going to live a life that you don't really want to live. And that's mm -hmm. not healthy for anybody. It's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for me. Uh, so, so, yeah, that that's just and that's a life lesson, people. 
Don't go through life. Anyways, um, so yeah, she, she sees that. She rushes out to the elevator. Uh, well, down the hall, everything else, you know, uh, eventually. And gets, then she realizes that she doesn't have her wedding ring. She was on in wedding. the elevator. Yes. The funny thing is when you see her getting into the elevator and you see this tall, extremely tall person behind yeah. the stairs door. How the long was he going to wait? Like, was he? <laughs> he was out the there stairs a really long time. Hey, hey, yeah. Dave Coupe. Hey, hey, hey. How's it's your Dave back, Coupe. Dave? How's your yeah. back? Did it help at all? Are you feeling better today, Dave? Let us know in the chat. Uh, I would like to know, uh, but hopefully you're feeling better. But yeah, uh, like Ginger said, there were stairs and doors, plurals. Um, so plenty of them. Um, sorry, I had to belch there a second. Um, oh boy, what did I eat? Pizza. Oh, it's coming up. Anyways, uh, yeah. So so she's in the elevator. She sees that, you know, and then what ends up happening is the killer, right? She can't get to the apartment to get the ring because... The killer is out there waiting for her, who they did show a glimpse of uh, through the stairwell right before the elevator scene. Yes. But this but this scene is so incredible. I mean, the way it's, he filmed. It's almost, it's, it's, it's almost like it's just all in slow motion. It's just. Yes. But it's not like. It doesn't make you feel like, oh, come on, come on, come on. No, it's beautifully done. Like, it's perfectly, it's it's like slow motion, but it's so that you can take in. There's no words. There's no dialogue. No. It's, There's it's no all, talking at all. Again, it's all character movement, camera movement. Um, you know, when you get the killer, when the door opens up, you, you get the killer looking right in, coming at, and and. As you do that, you see the razor, the the, mm -hmm. the street razor, <clears throat> and it just shines kind of like this spark off of there in front of his face as he's coming at her. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way it's filmed, you know, and, and he just, you know, she's backing up and he just takes a slice right through the hand. Mm -hmm. And from there, he gets it's into very the giallo, <laughs> very giallo. I, again, I've said this many times. People don't. People don't. Nobody say ever now. says that this is all the reviews that I watch because you know no. I'll watch I'll watch the movie and then I'll watch yeah. other people's reviews in case I missed anything Nobody or in case Brandon now. doesn't show up and point it out to me. Right. Um, like nobody mentioned the giallo aspect at all. I thought that was so weird because it's clearly a giallo. Oh yeah, yeah. No, they. I guess for America and Americans audience, uh, Dave Plouffe. Oh, yes, that's better good, by, Dave. I'm so glad. They, I think it gets better and end. better until it's a memory. Uh, and that's why I say, do, do you you heard me, Dave? You heard me. Uh, cleansing with the light, letting it in, letting it, letting it sit there in your back for a while before you let it through. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it. Let's let's talk again in a month. I'm not going to say you're not going to have uh, bad days, but you know, uh, hopefully it helps. But you have out. all of us. You have all of us. We're all of sending you, you the pew pew pew. Ooh, good vibes of course uh so she's in the elevator um uh what was i saying i i, I missed you're talking my... about the the glint of light off of the razor and the way that they filmed when she, when the guy the elevator opens and we meet liz nancy allen yes yes and liz yeah. is finished with this client for the night and they're gonna get in the elevator well the door opens and her 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 client <laughs> sees Nancy Dick, Angie Dickinson, Kate on the yeah. ground full of blood. And he's like, oh, and he, he takes off running because he doesn't because he's got a prostitute. He doesn't want to be involved in anything. Yeah. And actually, what I was saying, I was talking about that Giallo thing, like uh, American reviewers or whatever you want to say. They just really don't talk about this as a Giallo. And I think that's because it is. I think that a lot of the people who did the re these reviews did these reviews before really diving deep into the giallo uh, genre because how can you not say it i mean uh, of course it's an erotic thriller it's a crime drama but it's it's <laughs> they said they sent brandon to the cornfield <laughs> oh jeez oh jeez uh, listen listen ginger real quick it, again I, you know i don't mean to come off harsh but you know it, it's uh, and i didn't mean 
I don't mean to like run somebody off like Brandon or something like that. Mm-hmm. Brandon, you're always well, welcome the thing back. About you, the thing about you is you have two simple rules. Very simple. Just two simple uh-uh. rules. And uh-uh. you always, you always give people chances. You give people more chances than I would. So it's not like you just cut people off. You always no, warn them yeah. like, hey, maybe you're not familiar with it if you're new, like, but this is our rule. Yeah. And then they still step in over the line habitually, you know? Well, again, and that's the thing with YouTube. People always like to play the line and see what they can get away with. And don't ask me why. And what so kind Dino of, will show what you. Of, what kind of thrill does that give you to, to kind of, you know, play the line? Ooh, putting one over on them. Oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Uh, you know, so it just, it, it's just very, not up in here. but what's that? I said, not up in here. Yeah, there you go. So again, uh, 100% Seattle. Anyways, go. So, so Nancy's there. Um, and we're, we're saying Nancy, but it's Liz Blake is her name Liz. in the film, Liz. And so she uh, looks in the elevator. Cause this dude runs off and she looks in the elevator and she sees, sees him. Dickinson crumpled on the floor like begging her help me help me and, and the she's killer reaching in to, to help her because at first liz doesn't see that there's somebody else in the elevator right all she sees is this woman on the ground reaching up like help me help me and she gets closer he was going to slice her hand too if she stuck this her hand is- in the ele- elevator he was going to slice her hand too we are at the elevator scene now, Rich Cat. <laughs> are we at the elevator scene now? Yes, and the way that he does um, that lighting, the lighting across her eyes, it's so film noir. It's so like 40s to me, film noir, the way she's looking up with those beautiful blue eyes and the light just goes like across her face. Oh, Nancy. Oh, Nancy Allen. Yeah, no, RTN, uh, it, it was made in the in 1980, uh, which predated home video. Giallo wasn't well known in the U.S. until oh, the video. That's era. a very good point. That's but, a very good point. But but, but that's not um, like I'm not talking about back then. I'm talking about even people who review the movie now. Yes, correct. That's absolutely not, right. Do not. They don't talk call it about Giallo. It as a Giallo film. That's so correct. that's my point with. Yes. Not understanding why. But anyways, it's it's a tiny little thing. And yes. I love Giallo films so much right now yes. that it irritates me that they just don't call this a Giallo classic. There's yeah. another one that's out there that we do have to cover. It's called The Editor. It's it's uh maybe 2018, something like that. It's a newer film, but it's considered one of the better. And it is in the category of Giallo films. It's an American made film and it's up there at the top of the list of giallo films and i'm like i've never seen it so we may have to do it one of these days but uh um so yes uh as the door is closing super Mm slow-mo she sees him in the something catches her eye like there's a there's a a mirror light which is very cool okay so so people wouldn't get mugged or killed in elevators even though angie dickinson did in this one uh they put a mirror Yes, there was a thing that they would do in a lot of the elevators that would show uh, behind the corner where you can't see somebody. Um, and so that, that's a security uh, thing. And she did see him. And right before the door closes, the razor blade drops and she grabs it and runs off with it. So well, did, did you even say that? She looked in and what caught her eye was the glint of that razor in mm-hmm. the light. It ran across her face. Yes. And she was like, well, what is that? And it made her look up into the mirror. And then she looks <laughs> in the mirror and sees this big blonde person with the straight razor in their hand. And Listen, then he said, Dave, <clears throat> no more giallo. Let Ginger choose something else. She's been. He she's did. Been he did. Movie. We're going to do blowout in two weeks. You know, <laughs> Sandy. It's like really weird. Uh, but anyways, um, Dave, why do you hate Jalo films? Come on, buddy. Work with me, man. Work you know, with me. Dino introduced me to Jalo. I'm excited. This is new to me. I never heard of it before. I recognize Maybe. it now when I see it, but I never heard of Jalo till I started, you know, going into Dino's channel here. And you love it, don't you? Uh, Peter do. says. Peter says maybe if they had a, a duck quacking noises. In, in the movie. <laughs> no, no, we don't need that. Okay. So, so one of those is enough. 
Oh my God, Ginger, we got to get through that. We got a half an hour. Let's okay. So she gets to the police station where we're introduced to. You're the one who's always playing. Don't put it on me. You're the one that's always going way off script. Listen, if we got to round this, wind this up really fast, we will listen. So we go to the police station, uh, where, where we're introduced to Dennis Franz of all people, uh, Detective okay, Marino. And I'm just going to say this. Yeah. Dennis Franz, great actor, cannot yeah. be denied. I but think this a- was his first role playing a cop, and he's so perfect for it. But he, although he dressed like a used car salesman, <laughs> the yeah. only thing about this that bothers me is that Dennis Franz is from Chicago. He's got a Chicago accent, and he's supposed to be this hard-nosed New York detective, but he has a Chicago accent. I'm just saying, you know, that bothered me. But great actor. Great actor. Yeah, bit no, of a piece of shit. He's a bit of a piece of shit. Oh, he is. Oh, 100 percent I mean, he he's he's your typical, like, I don't give a shit what you think. I'm gonna to try to pin it on you, or I'm gonna to try to use you to yeah. kind of find the oh, killer. I'll lock you, up. you don't want to help me, I'll lock you up. Which is really what he's doing. He he's 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 forcing her to. Because he gives her 48 hours. He says, hey, you're the only suspect we got. You you have the razor, okay? Y- your story don't fit, although he's playing with her. Um, yeah. You know, you can't tell me. He wanted me that what... appointment book. He wanted the appointment book. Yeah. So so he kind of, from the psychiatrist's office, because uh, he also talked to um, Dr. Elliot, uh, Michael Kane, And, you know, Michael Kane was being very vague. At some point, you would, uh, uh, Giallo, G I A L L O now in six delicious flavors strawberry, cherry, lime, lemon, orange, and raspberry. So there you go. There's always room for Jallo. <laughs> there certainly is. Uh, everybody needs a Jallo mold. Uh, mold, mold. Uh, anyways, uh, so he says she's got 48 hours uh, to get that book to see who his patients are. Maybe we can dissect from there. And meanwhile, uh, Kate's son, uh, yes. Peter Miller. <clears throat> Takes he's got this cool little bike with little Pee Wee Herman, you know, rear view mirrors on there. <laughs> so it's, a it's a moped. It's a moped. It, yeah, early 80s moped, but um, you know, a nerdy something a nerd would ride, yeah, I'm you saying, know. Stop being a bully to the nerd. It's a moped. Listen, it's a, it's listen, a, I'm on, I'm, it's a moped. Yeah, I, I need my Harley, you know. Anyways, uh, with the wheel 17 feet out in front of me. So he sets up this elaborate camera oh, system. Anyway where yeah. he's got this camera stashed in his moped and nobody notices you can just leave it sitting out there chained to a tree for a week and no one's going to steal it. And you know, there was a time in the early eighties when they were trying to get more of those mopeds and stuff like that. They were just going moped, 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 you know, didn't they you just say mo- that we need to get through this? Didn't you just they say that we need to get through this? Them. And this is why we're not going to get through it because of this. They wanted Mo of them. I enjoyed the board game version of a Serbian. Film. Oh my RTN! What the hell? Um, anyways, you threw me off on that one, Denny. Uh, a Serbian film. Uh, we, yeah, um, I did talk about it on the channel, but yeah, that's a movie I, I wouldn't recommend to anyone. Um, anyways, uh, okay. Uh, so the moped has this little box in the back, has a little round hole. He's sitting it right at the door to see who leaves the doctor's office. And who, you know, how long it takes them and everything. And then he figures it out. He says, I'm going to take it every four seconds. I'm going to snap a picture. And he finds the out. He sees the the woman, the transvestite, uh, leave the doctor's office. The last person. The last patient. Yes. And that kind of should be the point where you kind of say. Hey, I think it's the doctor. It's 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 Dr. Elliot because that's when I was like, oh, it's only, him. Okay, it's him. He's the only one that could leave first. I mean, be the last one to leave. You know what I mean? Unless he lived there and he never leaves the office. But anyways, oh god, I'm belching. Man, that pizza was good though. Oh, uh, extra cheese, extra sauce. Um, anyways, uh <laughs> so uh, Peter ends up helping and figuring out or, or trying to track down these this killer. And um, uh, what happens next, Ginger? I'm trying to think. Um, what happens next? They, they go back. To oh, the at the police station. OK, they go. They're all at the police station because Angie Dickinson got murdered in the elevator. And they think that it's Nancy Allen's character, Liz, because she had the straight razor in her hand. And one of the okay. house cleaning ladies saw her and said, 
that's her. She did it. So while they're in there, this is what this is what really sets it in motion is that um, her son Peter had a listening device, and uh, Marino, the New York detective with the Chicago accent, he takes Michael Caine, the doctor, into his office and closes the door. But her son is sitting outside, and he yeah. puts the listening device on the wall and he hears them talking and he's like, this guy has something to do with it. This is the connection right here. Yeah. And so then he, that's when he decides to go put it, the camera up. Yeah. That's why where it all ensues, like, you know, him thinking and, and him kind of uh, stalking the doctor a little bit. I, I don't know. And throughout the whole thing too, though, you get um, Peter uh, being stalked by the uh, blonde haired woman. Mm -hmm. And, um, he you doesn't know. know it though. He doesn't know. No, no, he doesn't. So and, there's a lot um, of silent, more silent scenes, but we don't want to talk about that because there's a big one at the end that I want to talk about still. Yeah. Is there anything from here to, I'm trying to think to I'll the, just tell you what I have in my notes real quick. Someone's waiting outside Lizzie's office. apartment. This is when it becomes clear who the killer is. And it's like, Oh, oh, okay. You see Dr. Elliot in his office listening to a voicemail message from Bobby. Bobby leaves the Dr. Elliot a voicemail. How and weird. He called up his own office. Well, Bobby did, you know, Bobby, his dual personality, mm -hmm. uh, you know, saying, yeah, yeah. I would have liked him to use more of a woman's voice kind right. of thing. Like, them, you know, because they kind of, made it clear that it was a man. Yeah, that, that's kind yeah. of a giallo thing. But again, he didn't want to copy 100%, but he, you know, he was he was pretty close on a lot of other things, uh, incorporating the Hitchcock it. Hitchcock thing, movie. definitely the Hitchcock thing. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of Hitchcock uh you know uh set up and themes in the movie too so but yeah I, okay so this does take us to the psychiatrist's office because they 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 devise this plan where peter is going to be the lookout for uh uh liz to go in and talk to the psychiatrist because i've been going through this they're, they're blaming me and for seduce him she goes there to seduce him because yeah she knows let's get straight to that ginger okay it's not all about that Okay, I know SCX sells, but come on, <laughs> chill out. There's a deeper issue at hand here, and she's really trying to figure out why she's no. I'm, she, she goes in there to seduce him, and uh, <laughs> oh my jeez, oh Dino, you're driving me crazy. I put the curse on you. I put the curse. Anyways, um, so yeah, they devise this plan, and oh, I I think I watched the scene. 20 times because I could set it to repeat that section 20 times and I just laid the there. part where the part where she takes her coat off and she's yeah, wearing the yeah because yeah, okay because she does it's the not exact all about the sex though it's not all about that oh exactly yeah so I don't know why you brung it up um <laughs> so so she's sitting there talking to Michael Caine's character Dr. Elliot and doing the same exact thing that um kate did at the beginning she goes she triggers it she doesn't realize she's doing it she's saying she the same says, exact dialogue you though. think i'm sexy and he's like yes and she's like then why don't you want to sleep with me and he said well and he looks at himself in the mirror again yes yes but she does something different because she's pushing this forward she's she's getting that book of names dang it man i'm pissed off about this because we need that book ginger without the book we're so not she, gonna know who the she tells oh. him, well, hey, I'm going to hey. go powder my nose, hey, I which see means bird. she's going to snort some cocaine. I'm going to go powder my nose. And when I come back, I want to see your clothes on the floor right next to mine. And she closes the pocket door what and she starts doing? going through all his drawers trying to find this appointment book. And he starts taking his clothes off. And, right. me, and you, all this whole time, the son, the, the 16, the, the kid is out there with binoculars looking through the window. Well, so you he's think, watching the whole thing. You you think when Michael Caine's character is taking off his clothes because at first she says, "Can I can I take my clothes off?" and he goes, "Feel free." Or his her jacket off, and she takes it off, and oh my God, the lights just gleamed from heaven, and <laughs> you've seen this beautiful woman in garters, and she know, was gorgeous. She oh, was she's a beauty. She's a beauty. She's one in a million, girl. She was one in a million, girl. Uh, so uh, when and you when see she's him, leaning, she's sitting up see, on the desk. When yeah, she's I know. Let's not get desk. too descriptive. Yeah, I, of course. Yes, yeah, she's. 
um, he, when he's taking off his clothes, it's not him getting ready for her. It's him changing into Bobby, the killer. And he can't help it because when he gets turned on by a woman, it flicks a switch and Bobby takes over. So he has no control over it. Uh, night, night, so Sinjin. Angry. See you later, Sinjin. Uh, he says, uh, good night, all. It's been fun. Catch you on the next stream. Uh, Johnny Dollar tonight. Johnny Dollar. Um, so, yeah. So so she comes back in the room to, like, because she got the name. She got the address uh, of Chris Cle uh, Clemens, I think it is. Chris Clemens, um, which isn't the killer because it ends up being Michael Caine. But, um, oh, my. Yeah. So, so she goes in there and Peter's looking in. He's all the way up to the window. And uh, go ahead, Ginger. Well, what happens first? Do we know? Uh, I can't remember what happens first because a tall blonde comes up behind that kid because he's Peter, like, something's yeah. not right. Something's going on. It both on. happens at the same time. Like Michael Caine, the killer, is coming up to uh, Liz, uh, Nancy Allen's character. And that, Peter that scene right there, the way the, the movie, you said, what's it called again? Forward? <laughs> Forward and back focus. Forward and back focus. Forward that is... and back focus focus that is that scene is the to me that's the yeah. best scene in the movie it's so it's like the the height of the suspense of the movie that shows her walking towards the window like there's something outside this window and she's walking to it she doesn't realize that he's behind her <laughs> you know what and, Artien, i think i do remember something like that yeah and rich can't y'all i'm still stuck picturing dino and hammer pants <laughs> Have a time. Have a time. <laughs> oh, can't oh. touch this. Anyway, can't touch this. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Batman, <laughs> Butler, and and drag. Uh, so so yeah, it, no, it's yeah. That's one quick scene there where Peter's trying to come to pound on the window, and out of nowhere comes the female officer who's been tailing him. Well, you don't know it's her. You think it's the killer. Well, right, right. But she jumps him, knocks him down on the ground. And uh, what happens next? Um, well, obviously, he's <laughs> he tries to kill Nancy Allen. I mean, that's the only other, that's the only thing that's left. Right. Yeah. And they, they uh, what do they do? They shoot him, right? They, 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 they shoot him. Oh, we skipped the whole train sequence. Or did we get to that yet? The whole what sequence? Train sequence? Was there we a didn't train? We didn't get to that sequence? yet. The subway? Did we oh, do the subway? that was earlier. We didn't even do the subway scene, but I we can throw that. it in real. We can throw it in real quick because it kind of harkens back to the other Giallo films we did, where they incorporated that kind of um, the rapey, rapey. Yes, yes. Um, subway scene, and and Brian De Palma throws that in there too. I think and the thing that's funny is that she's running from this. She's, she's this. Come on, she's this little white girl running from this whole gang of black, big black guys, and no one's going to help her. She knows no one's going to help her because it's New York. Nobody. It's 1981. It's New York. Nobody's, nobody's going to get involved in that. And she's yeah. running through the subway car, literally running for her life. And there's people in there, but she knows yeah. nobody's going to help her. Nobody wants to get involved with anything. Kitty right. Genovese, remember Kitty Genovese? Yes, yes. So. So so she's running from car to car and ends up opening up a door and, and she's uh, in between two cars and the killer the killer grabs her. You think it's and, the killer. That wasn't the killer right, though. Right, it was the cop. But it just so happens that that kid cop. that boy genius shows up. Yes. And he yeah. sprays his own he had his own special like pepper spray or something. So I Yeah, just he says he yeah, he says he made it at home. He's he's a genius. Yeah, he, he made his own mace spray. Um, yeah, and uh, and then they end up back. That do you know that is a, yeah. that is the other problem that I have with this movie. Just real quick, that um, okay. that when when she starts running from the guys, okay, because they're like, well, you know, you ain't bothering me, but you're bothering him. Yeah, and she starts running from them. She was running so leisurely. And they gave up so quickly. They saw the, I guess they saw the transit police officer and they quit, but yeah. 
she wasn't even running that hard. They weren't even really chasing her. It was just like, what are we doing here? Is this a chase scene? Or are they just jogging? Yeah. She was so casual about it. I just thought that kind of ruined it, the scene for me a little bit. Yeah, that was the beginning. There was a little bit. And it, of course, I mean, it doesn't diminish the movie whatsoever. But if we're going to nitpick and say certain things about the film that you look at and go, oh, what? What? Uh, you know, th that's one of them. But uh, there's another one. Fine, definitely. then I'm nitpicking. <clears throat> Oh, no, no. Well, okay. okay. So, so the very ending. What? Get to the ending so we oh, can get to so that dream then sequence. What? Uh, what Bobby tells the message that Bobby left for Doctor Elliot was: "You won't um, sign the forms that I need to get my sex reassignment surgery." So I went to a different psychiatrist who said he will sign the papers for me, and his name's Doctor Levy. And if you tell him anything about me that makes him think that I'm not a good person, I will come for you. Yeah. And he's like, hmm. hmm. So he goes and meets this other doctor. Dr. Levy. Yeah. And they have a conversation. And I don't remember what they talked about. Oh, the, they're they're explaining everything about um, his dual personality and, uh, you know, the transvestite and, you know, the reasoning behind it and all that no, stuff. That, so was, that was later. That was at that was at the end. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. OK. OK. So, he, so yeah. Go ahead. She goes, she goes over, she opens up the curtain so Peter can oh, see. Oh, let's through. get to the end of this movie already. Oh. She finds the she finds the appointment book and she looks and he has a Rolodex. Remember the Rolodex? <laughs> Wait, where are you at now? Are you talking about when she snuck into the doctor's yeah, office? Just, that was just a little thing that I wanted to. Okay, so you're going back. Movie, we have a whole like Scooby-Doo reveal where it's like, oh, Dr. Elliot! And you learn everything, all the reasons why he does what he does. Yes. And and how does he get killed? Does he get killed? Well, he gets shot. Yeah. He gets shot, but does he get oh. killed? Hello, Vicki Lund. Hello, beautiful folks. Thank you very Hi. much. Hi. Of being called a folk. Hey, folks. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly uh, what what's what's the scene where he gets shot. Can you explain it? Do you got it in your notes? Uh, are you being sarcastic? <laughs> no, seriously. I'm trying to remember where uh, what scene. It was. It moment? must have been um, because the it was actually the police officer that came and grabbed Peter. So she knew what was going on too. She was watching too. And so when Dr. Elliot went to try to kill Liz, the doctor was there. The the undercover police officer was there and she shot him. Yeah, that's that's what I said. And you said, no, anyways, okay. So and so he, that's where we're he at. He falls back and his wig falls off and you're like, yeah, that's him. Yes. So so that all happened at that doctor's office. Okay, yeah. We're, we're jumping all over the place here a little bit. But uh, that happened and then we go straight to um, them at the police station or the uh, hospital. Oh my God. You know, it, it really doesn't matter. Let's there get was to a the really good scene. There was a really good scene that was actually funny when yeah. she was again, uh, Liz is now demure. She's like, she's, she needs to step back for a minute because she's been through some stuff <laughs> and she meets the kid, Peter, and they're like in a cafe and she has her hair done very, just straight, like very girly, and yeah. um, she's got no nail polish on. And she tells the kid about how this guy wanted sex reassignment surgery. And he's asking her in detail, like, how do you do that? Yeah. Oh, and he's explaining to him exactly word for word. And there's a right. woman behind him that's literally clutching her pearls because she can hear what they're talking about. It's she's so going, oh my. She's yeah, like, she's going, oh, how do, oh my God, what are they talking Well, that's. That's very kind of taboo for 1981. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, it, it's something that, you know, you hear in public people talking about and you're like, you know, I mean, that's you're right on the cusp, cusp of, you know, being able to operate and, and, and do that kind of stuff. You know, I forget the name of the, the trans uh, woman from that period who actually went on to become a model in real life. And um, a lot of people had no idea, but ended up becoming a pretty big model during that time. You remember but anyway, when, uh, there was a scene when Dr. Elliot was in his office alone and he was watching an actual episode of 
Bill Donahue or Mike Douglas? I forget if I Phil think it was Donahue. Donahue. Oh, yeah, how can you not forget? Oh, I'm Phil Donahue. I'd like to ask you a question. And that was a real show. That was actually a show that aired on TV. Oh, yeah. That was Phil Donahue. Yeah. He would go, why <laughs> on planet Earth would you, a man, want to be changed? He's married, into he's married to Marlo world. Thomas. He's married to that girl. I'm okay yeah, with that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so anyways, it, it all revolved around that. He ended up getting shot. We then, which we didn't know until the very end, we get into this dream sequence that kind of bookends the beginning of the movie, which is a yep. dream sequence. And uh, you go straight It's Nancy into... Allen. She's asleep. It's it's uh, Liz, the yeah. call girl. She's sleeping. But right before that, you get, you get uh, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Elliot in the mental asylum. Mm -hmm. And he's laying there. And this is the, this is one of the problems I have with the film. This, again, doesn't it wasn't necessary. It wasn't necessary. Doesn't make me hate it anymore. But it it being a dream sequence. And hey, Frank McCloud it, and Lord Bison, what's going on? Hey, um, Frank, I'm Ginger. I've never met Frank. Who's this Frank guy? Hi, Frank. Yeah, right. <laughs> Keith Gordon, who played Angie Dickinson's son, also played in the horror film Christine. I mentioned that. Yes, we uh, did earlier, mention that an hour and a half ago. On. And yes, the uh, Dexter too. Uh, anyways, um. Uh, th this dream sequence puts him, and this is what kind of gives it a pass because it's a dream sequence. But while you're watching it, if you believe he's in an asylum now, because they say, uh, you know, after he heals, who knows what's going to happen? He's going to go up in front of the judge and then they'll figure it out. But yeah, yeah. but it's so dark. I kept thinking, why is it so dark? And all these well, people the are around watching well, him do this and nobody's there to stop him well that's the thing i'm going okay there's a nurse walking through this asylum there's people walking all over like it's 19 or 1890s or something you know state <laughs> penitentiary you know whatever state asylum or whatever and you know there's cages and bars you know and you know ooh, ooh, you know stuff like it was like and there that was like a gallery above them like they oh, were the, looking down yeah there were no there were no security there were no other doctors or nurses or anything uh which lends to the dreamlike state uh, that yeah, this was yeah. in the scene which you really don't know until she wakes up at the end but, it's dark uh, and kind of like foggy smoky like what's going yeah. on why is it so dark you can barely the, see yeah, and the nurse walks up to him in his bed to cover him up, and he strangles her, and and then and it's a uh, jump scare. <gasps> yeah, it's a jump scare. And he takes yeah. her clothes off, and he puts her uh, clothes on. He does, and, and he her walks, shoes. And, and you think he's going to Peter's house, where uh, Liz is staying mm -hmm. with him because the dad's gone, the stepfather. Uh, so come stay at my place, prostitute. Huh? Yeah. Take a shower. So you get her in the shower. Peter's in his room doing his thing. And when I seen him walk up to the window and Peter is like working on his project, looking straight at the window, I'm like going, how does he not see uh, <laughs> him, her? How does he not see her? Um, and then you get him entering the house. Glass breaks. He's by the bathroom. You see the nurse's shoes. And she gets this thing like something's wrong. And she looks over. The door's open. You see these nurses shoes down Dude. there you know and um it's funny how they did that too that they she's looking she's slowly working her way out what the flock love your collection yeah thank you um uh yeah anyways uh <laughs> so she's coming out real slowly to open up the medicine cabinet to see if there's another razor blade in there uh straight razor Yes, and, because everyone had one. Everybody oh, yeah. just had a straight razor. Yes, yes. And um, 1930s Old Spice and uh, McCurry <laughs> in the 40s. Uh, and um, she takes it out there and she turns around and you look, they show the shoes and there's no body in there. And then immediately the killer's behind her and he grabs her and slices her throat. And that's where, if you didn't know who the killer was or what's going on, you would go, oh. <gasps> She went all through this movie and she dies at the end. What's going on? And then what happens real quick after that? She wakes up. 
She wakes up from her dream. Where is she? And again, remember I told you at the end of the movie when she's she's now kind of chastised. She's like, I, you know, wow, I need to clean my act up or something like that. What she's wearing when she's sleeping, she's wearing like a full flannel nightgown that comes all the way up to the neck. I'm just saying, like her evolution from this. Yeah, yeah. One Trying to make her another. By the end of the movie, she's just a completely different person. Oh yeah. <laughs> What the heck is Keith Gordon related to Flash Gordon? And then Jerry Drew says, Is David Keith related to Brian Keith? <laughs> what the hell are you guys talking about? I love the chat sometimes. Anyways, uh, Angie caught the clap from the dude in the art gallery. Lord, you need to rewatch from the beginning. Yes, we said all this stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and, and I think it was gonorrhea, right? Yeah, is clapping the gonorrhea. It said the syphilis and gonorrhea. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, a it, a I said that it was yeah. a twofer. Yeah, it's a bad, bad. She was going to have a bad time to begin with. So, you know, I mean, uh, whatever. So, so yeah, it ends with the dream sequence and, and that ends the movie. I mean, uh, geez, man. I mean, other than those little things at the end, which once you figure out it's a dream, you can kind of look past all that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so there's so that. What would you uh, give it? I give it an 8.5. Oh, okay. Uh, Black Roses, what's going on? Uh, one of these days, I will have to watch a movie uh, you review. I should watch Frankenhooker. Yeah, sounds good. Black Roses. Um, my bad, Dino. Oh, no problem, Lord Bison. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, we're at the end of the discussion, so we're we finished the movie. We we we, we there's tons of tidbits all at the beginning, in the middle, and, and towards the end. Um, but. Yeah, I would give this probably, um, and this is just off the cuff. Um, I would give this for what it is a, a, a Kathy, solid. Rich Cat Ranch, you behave yourself. <laughs> Rich Cat Kathy. Because of the bushes. don't you be naughty, girl. Is that why you're demoted it a little bit there, Ginger? A uh, full on bush. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> well, you know, um, I'm a landscaper at heart. So I, I get the, anyways, um, I'd give it a solid nine out of 10 is what I'd do. That's what I do. I figured you'd give it a nine. I figured yeah. you'd give it a nine. For this, for this one. Yes. It's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's one, if not the best Brian De Palma film. And that's saying a lot. Because that is saying a lot. Scarface, <laughs> Scarface is one of my favorite movies um, for the genre, for the genre. And see, my problem um, with Scarface, I, I, I'm so invested emotionally in the story that I can only watch friend. Scarface up to a certain point, and then I have to stop watching it. When it stops gotcha. looking like it's fun, and it starts looking gnarly, like when Elvita first leaves him, and he starts going downhill. Yeah. I can't watch it after that. I yeah, it, it gets it gets dark. And, and Yeah, I can't. Yeah. It's a fantastic movie, though, but you think Rich this is better than that. Um, uh, for, for what it is, yes. Um, once we like, if I were to get into a whole stream talking about like gangster films, mobster films, stuff like that, oh my god, it, it, you know, there's so many different directions we can go that way. But uh, if we're just talking Brian De Palma and, and his films, um, and, and the kind of you know kick I'm on with Giallo and with the whole horror channel and all that i mean this is this is pure uh, i'm not gonna say genius but you know th this is close to perfect for what this, it is i told you that's what i so, said at the beginning i said it's not perfect but it's so close to perfect yeah, yeah there's parts of it that are perfect but then there's parts of it that kind of aren't so the movie you can't say it's perfect but there's parts of it that are just genius genius <clears throat> Lord Bison, the Bush in the film 1984, too much. Yeah, I, I, you know, the question is, Lord Bison, 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 hey, Bison, Lord Bison, um, Lord Bison, the question is, is there ever too much Bush? And the answer is yes, yes. Bushes in any facet of life eventually get overgrown and if it's not taken care of things get in there um animals end up making nests <laughs> um 
so the shares need remember to come Peter out. Griffin? Remember Peter Griffin on Family Guy? <laughs> when he was <laughs> we had birds living in there forever. And he, he, he took care of them and he even fed them. Remember, he went, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> Poop all over his beard. So we're talking about family guy, Peter Griffin. Uh, oh, too good, too good. Um, with that said, yeah, another one in the books. Do you know that we've been doing this for two months now? <laughs> it seems like only 10 years. Really? No, I'm really? kidding. No. Hey, listen, when me and Ginger get together, or, or me and Ted, when I do these movie discussions, uh, it's a free for all, you guys. Um, you know, because I just of I, you because I, of you, you listen, and that ne'er do well friend of yours, Ted. <laughs> if we don't have fun with this and we can't be adults and enjoy fun discussions, uh, even a little risque at times, and going, you've a got a whole. You've got a whole conversation going in the chat now about bushes. Thanks, well, Dino. Let, let, let them talk. Let them go keep on it, with it. Keep let it classy, talk. Cleveland. Yes, I can't. Listen, I, I'm. what are you talking about? I, I'm keeping it classy. <laughs> that's that's the whole point. Uh, yes, I can't date anyone with too much bush anywhere on the body. Um, Chris W., uh, I, I, I hear you. Uh, Lord Bison uh, says crabs are parasites. Yes. Uh, that's why <laughs> the shares need to come out. Uh, Black Roses, I love you two together. Do you know Ginger? Oh, thank you. I thank you. Uh, it, it's always fun talking movies with Ginger. Next week, we are going to do Demons. Demons. A great horror flick. So there you go. Um, I've never seen it. Oh, WWM saw Bush in concert. Bush became I did a... Too. I saw them at the music festival, the HF Festival yes. at RFK Stadium in 1995. Yes, yes. Uh, and Stranger Things helped to make Bush, Kate Bush, famous again. Although she's always... That damn famous. song, My if book. I have to hear that song running up that hill Not one more time, I'm going to break something! Uh, Black Roses, crab, 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 crabs. Uh, the Browns did win today, Jerry Juilliard. Yes, by the skin of their teeth. By the skin of their teeth. But we actually had a home opener with a win. Not not a home opener, but an opener with a win. Uh, but, you know, hey, um, Ted promised to do the Silence of the Lambs dance, uh, Chris W. Oh, that will never happen on the set. That will never happen here. It just won't. Um, anyways. You can uh, make that a special event, like a pay-per-view on your Patreon. <laughs> yeah, for OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, special. Yeah, you guys want to see it? No, you guys want to see it. Uh, you know, I bet you somebody does, but oh, I got jitters. Crab people, crab people. Uh, my sorry, Raiders lost to the Chargers. Oh, jeez. Steelers won today, too. Woohoo. Yeah, sorry, Connie. Uh yeah, don't take too kindly to those Steelers, but um, love you though. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> Ginger's a Steelers fan too. Uh, I am not. Oh, I am Philly. not. Yeah, you're an Eagles fan. Yeah, you're a diehard Philly. I mean, if there's anybody who's diehard uh, city, it's it's Ginger with Philadelphia. And with that, we will see you next week for uh, Demons and. Stay tuned for Johnny Dollar. That's right. The most popular detective show on the face Yours of the truly? earth. Yours truly. Johnny Dollar. And uh, with that, Psychology Noir with Dr. Lund. Uh -oh, hey, I might need to talk to you in a little bit there. <laughs> Good evening to all on a Sunday night. You Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having my back. I really appreciate it. And I always know that if somebody comes in here and tries to get ignorant, that you guys have my back and Dino has my back. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. Of course. Hell yeah. Thank you. And that's, uh, well, well, 